If you want to insert a, an equation, you know, it has a bunch of special characters that you probably recall from your days in algebra, fractions, or more advanced equations. To do that, just come up here, click on the Insert tab, just like inserting a symbol. Guess what? We're going over to the Symbols group, and then coming up here, and you got two ways to do this. You can click on the Equations button, and it brings up its related contextual design tab here, and it says go ahead and type in an equation here. Just go ahead and start typing. We'll say B. I'm making this up as I go. B, and then I can come up here in the uh, symbols group and say it equals. And I can type in, you know, any other letters or numbers, or better yet, I can insert some brackets. Come up here to the structures group, and then click on the bracket drop down arrow. Do I want any brackets? Let's go ahead and select the first one. And then if I'm like, okay, I like that bracket, but within the bracket, let me go ahead and select that square, that placeholder, and let's change the design of that by coming up here and clicking on the fraction drop down arrow and say so you want to convert that into a stacked fraction. And then when you want to actually work with the placeholders, like come up here at that square, go ahead and select it, and then type in some sort of kooky equation. We'll say b minus the uh, w of t, then come down here, is divided by, of course, i. Well, you know what you're doing if you can go ahead and work with the equations. I'm showing you where it's at here. And then you'll notice that when you're inside of it, it brings up the design tab, click on the outside, it disappears, click within it, brings it back up. You also have the corresponding drop down arrow to the right, the options for the equation, click on it, and you've got professional and linear. When I select professional, nothing changes, but when I click it and I go to linear, it puts it in the order of operation. As you recall in algebra, that which you see which is in the first set of parentheses here must be done first. So B minus WT. After that's done, then it will divide it, the result of that, b minus wt, by i. And by default, when you insert an equation like that, it wants to, uh, looks like put it in the center. You can come up here on the Home tab. Well, actually, it's in Justification mode. Let's go ahead and click on the corresponding drop-down arrow and save as far as justification. Let's go ahead and align it to the left, and it puts it over there. In fact, if you want to go ahead and move it down, you can click and hit Enter a couple of times, and that pushes it down. Or you can go ahead and click within it and grab the uh, left tag there and click and drag it to move it up. As long as you have paragraph markers, you can move it from one line to the next. You know, come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group, click on the Show Hide Codes. And you can click it and drag it down to the next paragraph marker, the one at the very bottom here. Let me go ahead and turn the codes off. And then if I want to go ahead and save this equation here, click on the corresponding drop-down arrow. Say you want to save it as a new equation. Brings up building blocks here that we'll cover in a later training video, but... Basically, you can go ahead and give a name for your equation, call it, you know, it's my spiffy equation. It's going to save it in the gallery of equations. So when I come back up here, click on the Insert tab, and click on the Equations, that drop-down arrow to the right, it'll be listed there. We haven't done it yet, but it'll be there. So it's spiffy EQ will do too, so it sounds really fancy. And then click OK. And then let me go ahead, and to delete this, you can click on the uh, tag here, hit the Delete key, gets rid of it. So let's say, okay, I want to use this equation again, but I can't remember how it was built. Well, we already saved it as an equation, so to insert that, come back up here, click on the Insert tab, go to the Symbols group. Instead of clicking on the Equation button, click on its corresponding drop-down arrow, and you've got some built-in equations that you can go ahead and insert, the least of which is the one that we saved, and it was in the Equation Gallery, so let me go ahead and click and scroll down all the way to the bottom, and there it is, my spiffy EQ2. Go ahead and select it, inserts it, or like I said, you can use one of these other templates if you don't want to type in all this. Go ahead and click on it, inserts it, then you can go ahead and mess with it. Like instead of n equals 1, you can, of course, change it to t equals 1, whatever works for you. Now, it doesn't actually calculate the equation. If you want to do calculations, you want to use Microsoft's Excel. It's just basically a bunch of non-working symbols here, for your eyes only, not to be used to calculate anything. Let me go ahead and select the, uh, I call it the ear. You can call it a tag, just the left-hand side there, hit the Delete key. Come back up here on the Insert tab, click on the Equations drop-down arrow, scroll down to the bottom. I can go ahead and right-click on my equation and say, I want to go ahead and delete it. If I click on Organize and Delete, it brings it up here. And again, we'll cover this in a later training video. These are called Building Blocks, and basically, they're items that you can go ahead and save, and I'll store it here. But I want to delete it, and you can see it's selected right there. Go ahead and click Delete. Are you sure? Click Yes, close out, and it's no longer there. Equation drop down arrow, nothing. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.